Sagittarius Risings November 2022 is an interesting month because it combines a lot of focus on intense things happening around physical health or coworkers for you, but also amazing new beginnings around you, your identity, and spotlight on you as we end the month. If you're excited to dive into what this month has in store for you and your rising sign, make sure that you like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so that you are always up to date with what the stars have in store for you. If you're new here, hi, I'm Marin. I am a Western astrologer using the tropical zodiac and whole sign houses in this video. And I do at times have availability for private readings and consultations. So if you are interested in that or any of my courses and offerings, you can always check out the links below. And several of the things mentioned in this video, such as the new and full moon or really major transits have their own videos, which you can watch for more info outside of this one. So from the 5th to the 7th, there's a challenging fixed sign T-square between your 12th house of mental health, your 6th house of physical health, and your 3rd house of day-to-day -day routine and productivity. It appears that you're putting a lot of effort into improving your mental health and behind the scenes, like when you're alone with yourself, you really, really improve that relationship. But physically, there could be some chaos or some disruptions with chronic physical issues that you're having, or your coworkers in your day-to-day -day work environment is also disrupting your mental health, as well as some issues and demands from your day-to-day -day productivity, putting a lot of stress on that too. Now on the 8th, there's a lunar eclipse in your 6th house. Lunar eclipses are huge, very serious, very major endings. They're periods of letting go. And for you, it's in your 6th house of physical health issues or routine and also co-workers. So you could be letting go of people that work for you or people that work with you. You might be ending the group of people that you're around on a day-to-day -day basis in that regard. Or you might be having a pretty chaotic, uh, I don't want to say episode, but some sort of ordeal with physical health that's then put an end to. So if you have a physical issue, it's more chronic than it is uh, something out of the blue. This would be more like a chronic flare up that then you lead to like, I'm really done with this. I'm going to put in the effort to end this. Or it could be there's some type of ending or letting go around diet or exercise that has come to a pretty chaotic head. Now on the 7th to the 11th, the fixed sign T-square continues. Now with the sun and mercury in your Scorpio 12th house, there's a lot of focus and beautiful things happening around your mental health during this. There's some chaos around physical health or coworkers, yes, but mentally there's some pretty amazing new beginnings and um, things happening in that regard. Uh, then from the 10th to the 15th, the Sun and Mercury and Venus in your Scorpio 12th house are trying Neptune in your fourth house. So your family is very supportive of this. You have an amazing family as you're dealing with some physical and mental health changes. And from the 15th to the 16th, these planets in Scorpio are now trying Jupiter in your fourth house. So growth, expansion, a lot of like appreciation and gratitude regarding family is happening here. Then on the 16th, Mercury and Venus are entering your first house of self. You have a lot to say, you have a lot to provide, you have a lot to do and be heard for the second half of the month. Then from the 16th to the 22nd, Mars in your seventh house is squaring Neptune in your fourth house. So it could be that someone you're in a relationship with or a committed partner is not on the same page as your family. There is a difference of priority between your partner who is very go, 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 and your family making that a little bit slower or being confused as to what your partner is doing. There is some discord there. This could be a business partner if you're not in a relationship. Now on the 22nd, the sun enters your first house. So spotlight is on you. And on the 23rd, there is a new moon in your first house. Now this is a beautiful, optimistic, very explorative, very energized new beginning. And for you, it's in your first house of self, physical body, physical appearance, or who you are known for. So it definitely seems like a glow up in your life where you're like, I'm here, I'm ready to be seen. And maybe you're getting on top of like health and fitness. And that was the sixth house stuff. Or you're just very, ready to be seen more authentically for who you are. And with Mercury and Venus conjunct from the 19th to the 24th, it's a good time to write, put out content, put out videos, things like that really positive for you. Now on the 24th as well, Jupiter is stationing direct in your fourth house of home, family, and living situation. So growth, expansion, or just getting more out of your home and family is, is now increasing. So from the end of the year onward, it could be that there's just growth of closeness with your family. It could also be that you're renovating or moving forward with the property now. Um, from the 26th to the 28th, Mars in your seventh house will try and Saturn in your third house. Looks like your partner is really helping you get down to being productive and your day-to-day -day routine is very supportive of your relationship. Like your relationship and your day-to-day -day routine get along very well together. And on the 29th, Mercury in your first house is opposing Mars in your seventh house. So you might end the month, well you will end the month according to this, with a bit of an argument where you're trying to communicate something and someone you're in a close committed relationship with is is opposing that. They're like, nah, 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 nah. So there is a bit of an argument at the end of the month, but it's not the focus of the month. It's just, it doesn't like that. 
If that resonated with you or you already have any thoughts and predictions, do feel free to drop them down below. And now we will get to pulling a tarot card to see what other info we can garner for this month. The tarot card that we have for Sagittarius Risings this month is the Knight of Wands. So, but inverted, Knight of Wands inverted. So knights are the energy of going after or getting things done. Wands are creative, fierce, fiery energy. And inverted means maybe don't do that. Maybe do not go after something creative right now. Maybe do not go after something risky right now. Maybe rethink, redo, and go inward. But this is not the time to like say fuck it and go crazy. It's more the time to like see what's already been done and revise that. That's a wrap for this November. We only have one more rising sign video left before the end of the year, which is quite strange because I remember filming the 2019 rising sign videos back when I had literally 20 subscribers, maybe not even that, maybe just 20 viewers, maybe two subscribers. We've come a long way. Anyway, I'm wishing you all an amazing end to the year. Let me know down below any thoughts, any reactions or any predictions that you have yourself. And I look forward to seeing you next month.